Hi, my name is Mike Abin and welcome to Mission 26 of this KSP campaign. We are picking up this episode right from where last episode left off, namely on the surface of the moon with Jebediah Bill Bob and the recently rescued Lanfred. At the end of the last episode I had just completed one of the required contracts to collect temperature scans at some waypoints on the surface. And right now Bob is just going around and collecting all the science that he can from the moon's midlands. Unfortunately, we don't have time to dilly-dally, as due to some rather poorly positioned solar panels, we aren't generating any electricity right now, which means we can't do any transmitting of the science from the surface. Despite our brief time here, I did make sure that everyone took the opportunity to plant a flag. There is a bit of experience for the act, I believe half an XP, but there's no reason for it to go to waste. However, the main theme of this episode is not going to be playing about on the surface of the moon. We want to get our boys back home to Kier Station in low orbit about Kerbin. As such, one of the things we'll be talking about is using Kerbin's atmosphere to aerobrake in order to reduce the cost of that low orbit rendezvous. You may be noticing that I now have my textures sorted out. There is some file and folder management that is required to get this right, but it isn't too bad if you just read the documentation with the Texture Replacer Replaced mod. I changed up the textures a bit. In addition to being, I think, a little bit nicer looking, I've changed up the colors to match the class colors that appear with the Kerbal's portraits. As Jebediah makes his way aboard, I'll point out that a minor potential problem looms. This vessel currently contains 872 meters per second of remaining delta V. This is plenty to achieve low orbit about the moon, but will be tight for getting us back to Kerbin. I recognized this issue last episode after a not too efficient landing. This was due to two factors. One was coming down from a bit of an awkward orbit after rescuing Lanfred, but more significantly spending too much time tweaking my descent in order to land in the middle of three surface waypoints. I can't say I'm disappointed though, as my landing location allowed me to easily complete one of my contracts. Besides, I've got a simple backup plan. As you can see, I'm heading due east and pitching over pretty quickly. Okay, cut engines, apoapsis at 10 kilometers, and then we'll circularize there. I'm wondering if I would have been better off pitching over even more quickly than I did. Okay, 10 by 10 with 246 meters per second left in the tanks. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, this isn't going to be enough. I am in an inclined orbit as our landing site was a fair bit below the equator, but even hopping ahead orbits to the ideal ejection window still left my projected periapsis with Kerbin well out of the atmosphere. Well, we'll leave them in their current orbit as it'll be easier to meet up with them here than in a large elliptical orbit about Kerbin, but I think it's time to fire up plan B. What we have here is, well, not much more than a flying tank of fuel sitting atop my 1.25 meter heavy lifter and being helped along by a set of six Thumper SRVs. There's no need for a rescue mission here. Jeb and company just need a tad more resources and that's what this is for. I might as well take advantage of having docking ports now. Although this is a very simple vehicle, it does feature one new part, the FL-A10 adapter, a structural part making the transition between the 0.625 meter docking port and the 1.25 meter service bay. As you can see, this thing has a ton of delta V, but that's only because the vast majority of what it doesn't burn getting itself to the moon will be being transferred to the Aries. Actually, Though I'll admit that this wasn't part of the initial plan, I think sending a separate vehicle to hold resources is a completely legit way to design your missions. Though it would have been nice to get the Ares completely back on her own, I don't think there's any shame in this. Besides, while the little fuel tanker was making its way here, Bob was able to grab EVAs over three more biomes, the East Crater, the Canyons, and the East Farside Crater. 
Although Jeb and Bob have done some fine work with these EVAs, don't forget they are around the moon in episode 10 too. You can see here I still have some more to get. The northern basin, southwest crater, the polar crater, and the far side basin. Oh, I do love the search feature in X-Science. I probably will have to put a crew in low polar orbit to get the ones I'm missing. Clearly something for the future is right now the job is to get our current crew back home so we can finish off the contracts I started last episode. I didn't put any RCS on the fuel tanker. Once I've matched velocities, I'll just make it the passive vehicle and dock with the Ares. The Ares still has a lot of monoprop aboard. The Delta V for which is not counting what Kerbal Engineer is telling me. I could have worked out how much Delta V I had in monoprop, but I'm pretty sure it wouldn't have been enough to close the gap anyway. Okay, just about there. Alright! Okay, well, let's start transferring over this fuel. I'll leave a little bit behind so that the tanker can deorbit itself once we're done here. Ooh, we have a message. Well, some world firsts. We have started constructing the first station around the moon. Uh, I guess so, although that certainly isn't the intent here. And we have performed a docking maneuver on the moon. Again, what, what's with this on? It's not on, it's above, of course. Anyway, once undocked, I can see I now have 1,021 meters per second of delta V. Way more than enough to get the job done. I'm still jumping ahead a few hours before making the ejection burn. Not so much for the fuel savings, I've got plenty of fuel now, but I want my resulting orbit around Kerbin to have an inclination as close to zero as I can get. Remember these guys aren't landing on the surface, the Ares is incapable of landing on Kerbin. Instead, it needs to rendezvous with Kier Station, and thinking ahead a bit with the inclination now will make that process easier later. The idea is to use Kerbin's atmosphere to remove energy from the orbit instead of burning fuel to slow down. You want to be low enough for the drag of the atmosphere to be effective, but high enough as to not cause any heat damage to the vehicle or slow yourself so much that you don't come back out of the atmosphere at all. Both of these scenarios would likely result in the loss of the crew. I find a periapsis of 45 kilometers works well when descending from the moon, though it can vary with the vehicle. A great mod for this is trajectories, which will predict the resulting orbit after going through the atmosphere. I don't have the mod installed in this game though, as I thought it provided just too much of an advantage over the stock game, and I wanted to make the missions in this series reflect what could just as easily be done in a vanilla game. Whoa! That is wild! Look at the shadow on the moon! That's not the night side. That's a lunar eclipse, or should I say a moonar eclipse. We're being chased by Kerbin's shadow here. That is so cool. I've never had this happen before. The moon is completely in the shadow now. We're not. See, there's the sun. But that shadow has got to be chasing us. Oh man, look how dark the moon is. Of course, with Kerbin's orbit at an inclination of zero and the moon's orbit at an inclination of zero, you do get this every six days. I've just never been in the right place at the right time to see the lunar eclipse from this, uh, this particular perspective. I can't believe we're still in the sunlight. It can't be lasting much longer. Nope, still see sun over there. We're still generating power on the solar panels. Oh, 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 I can see the uh, shadow getting, the moon's coming out of Kerbin's shadow now. Oh, and we're losing power. Yes, we're losing power. The sun has finally dipped in behind Kerbin. <laughs> we're now in the eclipse. That is pretty cool. But you know, I think the fun is over. So let's cut ahead until we're closer to the atmosphere. 
Before we can enter the atmosphere, we want to orient ourselves retrograde so that the more rugged engines will be taking the brunt of the heating. We're also going to retract the antenna and close the service bay. Press F10 to turn on the temperature gauges to keep an eye on things. When doing this yourself, I would certainly recommend quick saving long before you enter the atmosphere. There is a bit of guesswork to this, and the results of a misstep can be catastrophic. You may want to give yourself permission for a practice go. In fact, things are looking a little hotter than I expected. We're almost at periapsis, at which point the worst will be over and we'll be on our way back up out of the atmosphere. Oh my gosh, I got a lot of heat gauges here. I'm a little surprised those toroidal fuel tanks aren't worse off than they are. Okay, there we go. We are on our way back up now. Oh, I got this one heat gauge kind of midships here. I'm wondering if it's that 2.5 meter adapter. The fact that it's heating up so much being in the middle of the ship makes me think that it might be adding to the drag of this as well. I was doing some part translating in the VAB to build this thing. Let's check on our apoapsis here. Oh my gosh, that is low and falling fast. Way faster than I'm used to. Yeah, I got a feeling that that part is adding to the drag quite a lot. Whenever you're translating parts in the VAB, the game, it seems to me, always seems to get a little bit confused as to what parts are in the airstream and what parts shouldn't be in the airstream. Oh well, we're coming out of this. We should be okay. And in fact, I'm going to see if I can adjust my inclination a bit. No, 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 that's worse. Okay, there we go. If you pitch north or south, the body lift on your vehicle will affect your trajectory. When I'm watching my inclination with Kerbal Engineer, it is going down. Not quickly. Right about an inclination of half a degree. And of course, as the atmosphere gets thinner, the effect is going to be less and less. Ideally, I'd like to be at the ascending or descending node with the station. So let's select the station here as a target so we can see where those nodes are. Oh, I'm nowhere near them. Uh, yeah, in fact, they're pretty much equally split on either side of the periapsis. That's about as bad a situation. I don't think I'll be able to adjust my inclination this way. Oh, oh well, that's okay. Boy, my apoapsis came down a lot. I'm worried if I do another pass at this altitude that I won't be coming out of the atmosphere on the other side. So I think I'll raise my periapsis a bit once I'm at apoapsis. There we go, 55 kilometers. Better safe than sorry. This resulted in the next pass being far less dramatic. A part unlocked later in the tech tree that will help with this is the deployable heat shield. Besides not only protecting the vessel, allowing you to uh, brake more aggressively, it also adds a lot of drag to help you slow down even quicker. Anyway, three more passes after this one and I have my apoapsis at 306 kilometers and figured it was time to start setting up a course for Kier Station. Step one is to raise my periapsis up to 120 kilometers, the altitude of the station. Then at periapsis I'll set up my rendezvous. You can see here that my half degree inclination difference does have the close encounter indicators a bit apart. For now I'm ignoring that and fixing my inclination once I get to one of the nodes. Finally a third burn at apoapsis is used to adjust the timing and zero in those close encounter indicators. This tiny burn was pure radial with me pointing straight out from the planet. You don't see radial burns much so I thought I would draw attention to it. And on their eighth day after setting off from Kier Station, Jeb, Bill, and Bomb are returning, along with a stray pilot that they picked up along the way. Okay, it's time to finish off some contracts. Already on the station are Lagerbing and Jering, whom I picked up from low orbit last episode. I want to move them along with Lanford into the racer so that I can get them to the surface and finish off these three rescue contracts. I'm going to leave Jeb, Bill, and Bob in space for now to perform more missions with the Ares. They don't have enough experience to go to level 2 yet anyway.
course, Bob is making sure all that sweet, sweet science goes to the KSC along with our new Kerbals. The final contract is the Explore the Moon contract, the only requirement remaining being to return to Kerbin from the surface of the moon. Lanford was as much on the surface as the other three, so I'm thinking this should meet this final requirement. I love how small that propulsion module is. Okay, let's lock onto the retrograde vector and ride this down. Never tested this for re-entry, but I've had similar configurations to this in the past, so we should be okay. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, it just lost the retrograde vector there. Okay, it didn't flip right around. It's kind of holding that position. <laughs> That's a little spooky. <laughs> Nothing seems to be getting too hot. Oh, I think it's dragged from that docking port up there. It's probably causing this. Oh, okay, okay. The heating's settling down now. We're okay. Ooh. Oh my gosh, look where we are. That's the KSC right there. We're coming like right over it. Oh my goodness. This is looking like these three might be able to just get out of the capsule and walk into the astronaut complex to catch some lunch. <laughs> I've never come this close on an unguided uh, descent before. And touchdown. And after recovery, all right, that is 331 science for a total of 564 science. Awesome. 9,000 curb bucks back for the vehicle. And all three of my new Kerbinauts go to level one. Lanfriend here has seven XP, just one shy of going to level two. And that's the same that Jeb, Bill, and Bob now have. Uh-oh, I see only three notifications here. Okay, rescue Gehring from orbit of Kerbin. Well done. Gehring Kerman has been recovered in one piece and is now enjoying a thorough yeah, 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 yeah. Since last time. And Lagerbin. And Lanford. And that's it. Oh dear. Okay, let's look at the contract. Yeah, it is not green there. Let's open up the fine print. We'd like to bring a vessel back to... A vessel back? Oh man, I had to bring the vessel back? Damn legal fine print! Okay, well the Ares can't come back. So I'll have to think of something else. In the meantime, let's go shopping. And in the R&D center, my first target was the Tier 7 Electronics, which gives me the accelerometer for more science, but also some bigger antennas that should be just the thing to go interplanetary. Something I've been wanting to do for a while. That's left me with 264 science, which I used on command modules, giving me the three crewed command pod, the two-man lander can, and the popular module. And then finishing off tier five with space exploration for the hitchhiker can, ladder parts, and small rover wheels. Outside, I got my third tier three building, the VAB, meaning I'll have no more part restrictions, but more importantly, I now have full action groups. And of course, I restocked on contracts, leaving me with well over half a million curb bucks in the coffers for my next mission. But you know that's going to have to be for the next episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching, and hope to see you again next time.